All right, gonna go through some scriptures and do a video refuting the Calvinistic heresy of total depravity, this Gnostic uh, Calvinist heresy of total depravity. And essentially what the total depravity Gnostic heresy of Calvinism says is that basically they twist the, the, the truth of man having a corrupt body of flesh and they make it where we're, basically human, mankind is so depraved they can't choose God on their own. Okay, now, like I said, mankind does have sinful flesh and a corrupt body of flesh, that is true. Okay, here are some scriptures on the matter, just some just uh, a quick reference to, the, to these verses. Uh, some scriptures on the matter are busy us having uh, corrupt bodies of flesh, I'll put it that way. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 3. There is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their hearts while they live, and after that they go to the dead. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 20. For there is not a just man upon the, upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Ecclesiastes 7.29 Lo, this only have I found that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Uh, Job chapter 15, verse 14 to 16 What is man that he should be clean, and he which is born of a woman, that he should be righteous? Behold, he putteth no trust in his saints, yea, the heavens are not clean in his sight. How much, how much more abominable and filthy is man, which drinketh iniquity like water? Job 25, verse 4 to 6. How then can man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of woman? Behold, even to the moon, and it shineth not. Behold, even to the moon, and it shineth not. Yea, the stars are not pure in his sight. How much less man that is a worm, and the son of man which is a worm? And of course, Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 1 to 3. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the, the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So it is, you know, I have done other videos on this whole thing. Uh, on the truth of the fact that we do have corrupt bodies of flesh and we do have a sinful body of flesh. That is true. But the Calvinist doctrine, the Calvinist Gnostic heresy of total depravity is a perversion of this scriptural truth. Basically, total depravity in Calvinism is, like I said before, stating that mankind is so depraved, he's completely unable to choose God by himself and choose to follow God himself or refrain from evil or accept the gift of salvation. Okay, that this is blatantly unscriptural. Okay, while we do have corrupt bodies of flesh, we're not just totally depraved that we can't even choose God or even choose to refrain from evil and do good. Okay, what say the scriptures? Well, the fact that even unsaved Gentiles have the law written in their hearts. Romans chapter 2, verse 14 to 15. For when, the, for when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things the things contained in the law, having not the law, are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the mean the, the, and their thoughts the mean while accusing or else excusing one another. Okay, and more proof of this is the fact that there are sins that are against nature. Okay, for example, homosexuality. And when I was, I remember when I was a lost atheist prior to the indoctrination I faced in high school, I believed that things like homosexuality, abortion, cross-dressing were just unnatural and not normal. And that was even when I was a lost atheist. You know, why? Well, because the law was written in my heart. And why? Well, because homosexuality is against nature, uh, against human nature. Romans chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. For this cause God gave them up, unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was me. Okay? And, I, and like I said, when I was an atheist, I always viewed that homosexuality, I, I always viewed it as something that was not normal. Because it's not, it's against nature. Uh, gender bending, the sin of gender bending is also against nature as well, against human nature, I'll put it that way. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 to 15. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given is given her for a covering. Now again, I remember when I was a lost atheist, I always, saw, I always found it weird when I would see 
you know, men with long hair. Why? Well, because it's not natural. It's against human nature. Uh, also, being without natural affection, as the, as the verse is described, is also against nature. Hence why it's called natural affection, because if you don't have it, it's against your human nature. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pre lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Also, Romans chapter 1 verse 18, or sorry, Romans chapter 1 verse 28, sorry, down to verse 32. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, dece deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, uh, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, uh, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Okay? Atheism is also against human nature. And I, I speak uh, from the standpoint of a former atheist. You know, I used to be an atheist. And atheism is totally against human nature. Okay, why? Well, because it's the fool who says in his heart there is no God. Okay, it's not natural to, to basically deny the Creator. Hence, why it's foolish. It says the fool says in his heart there is no God, because the proof of him is all around us too. By the way, I'll get into the scriptures on that. But Psalms fourteen one: The fool has said in his heart there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. Okay. Psalms fifty three verse one: The fool hath said in his heart there is no God. Corrupt are they, they have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. Plain and simple. And also, more proof that atheism is unnatural. Uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 18, down to verse 25. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being uh, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so that, that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorrupt, uncorruptible God into an image made like made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and to four, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up unto, un, unto uncleanness, uncleanliness, sorry, through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Okay, they knew God, the proof of, the proof you have for God is all around you, but guess what, they weren't glorifying him. Why? Because the fool says in his heart there is no God, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Okay, atheism is against human nature. So while we do have corrupt bodies of sinful flesh, there are still sins that are against our nature, and also we are not totally enabled to do anything good. Because again, gender bending, cross dressing, you know, homosexuality, it's against our nature. Being without natural affection, against our nature. Being into atheism is against our nature. Plain and simple. So this Calvinistic Gnostic heresy of total depravity is a perversion of the scriptural truth that we do have sinful bodies of flesh. Okay? Don't be deceived by Calvinism. It's just modern day Gnosticism repackaged. Okay? Augustine converted out of Gnosticism and then he laid the bedwork for Calvinism's heresies. Plain and simple. Also it was Islam as well, which I've shown pretty much, because I did a video about the Islamic uh, roots of Calvinist doctrine. Both both those uh, false religions come from Augustine, who in turn got his views from Gnosticism. So anyway, don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be, be with all the brethren. Goodbye.